Greetings, friends. Welcome back to the broadcast. I'm Sean. Website can be found at www.scriptureandprophecy.com. That's where you go to support this mission of truth. That's where you go to find the archives. That's where you go to sign up for the Hebrew Basics for Beginners. Lots of things there at the website. So check that out, www.scriptureandprophecy.com. Well, today we are resuming our study in the Kings. We're still in 1 Samuel. We're ready for chapters 10 and 11. Not super long. Uh, 10 and 11. Chapter 10 deals with uh, Saul being officially anointed as king. And, uh, you know, the thing that I've been trying to point out this study and our previous study is that in the beginning, Saul's a righteous man. And what we're going to see here is after he's anointed king, you know, God pours his spirit out upon Saul and gives him a new heart and Saul's prophesying and he's he's upright and he's not he doesn't seem to be looking to himself and then in chapter 11 he leads them in their first victory against the Amorites the Ammonites I'm sorry it just all seems like it, Saul's a good lesson to us to be careful because here's a man who had the Spirit of God, who's, who had God's favor poured out upon him, who was given a new heart. And yet, later on, and we won't see it happening this week, but I think we'll see it happening starting next week, he starts to fail. Pride starts to set in. But we'll get to that when we get to it. Before I read, starting with chapter 10, I want to read 2 Corinthians chapter 5. Not very long, but I just want to read this because it reminds us that we have a new heart. If we be in Christ, we become a new person. Let's take a look at it. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, here's what it says. For we know that. If our earthly house is the tabernacle of this tabernacle were dissolved, we have a building of God and a house not made with hands eternal in the heavens. For this we groan earnestly, desiring to be clothed upon with our house which is from heaven. If so be that being clothed we shall not be found naked. For we that are in this tabernacle do groan, being burdened, not for what we would be unclothed, but clothed upon, that mortality might be swallowed up of life. Now he that hath wrought us for the selfsame thing is God, who also hath given us, given unto us the earnest of the Spirit. Therefore we are always confident, knowing that, whilst we are at home in the body, we are absent from the Lord, for we walk by faith, not by sight. We are confident, I say, and willing rather to be absent from the body than to be present with the Lord. Wherefore we labor that whether present or absent, we may be accepted of Him. Paul's saying, look, we long to be absent from the body and, to, and be in the presence of God. Matter of fact, we labor that whether we're present or absent, that we may be accepted. Paul saying we labor to be accepted of Christ. Verse 10, For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, that everyone may receive the things done in his body according to that he hath done, whether it be good or bad. Listen, everybody accuses Paul of being this greasy gracer, right? What does he say? Wherefore we labor that we might be accepted. And then he goes on to explain why, for we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, that everyone may receive the things done in his body according to that he hath done, whether it be good or bad. Knowing therefore the terror of the Lord, we persuade men, but we are made manifest unto God, and I trust also are made manifest in your consciences. 
For we commend not ourselves again unto you, but give you occasion to glory on our behalf, that ye may have somewhat to answer them which glory in appearance, and not in the heart. For whether we be beside ourselves, it is to God. Or whether we be sober, it is for your cause. For the love of Christ constraineth us, because we thus judge, that if one died for all, then we then were all dead. And that he died for all, that they which should live, they which live should not henceforth live unto themselves, but unto him which died for them and rose again. Wherefore henceforth know we no man after the flesh, yea, though we have known Christ after the flesh, yet now henceforth know him no more. Listen to this, chapter 7, therefore, this is a famous verse, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. I bring up that passage because this happens to Saul. Verse 6, uh, we're getting ready to read. It says, And the Spirit of the Lord will come upon thee, and thou shalt prophesy with them, and shall be turned into another man. Part of Saul's anointing, as we're going to see, is he's turned into, God gives him a new heart and turns him into another man. And yet he still falls. Verse 17 again here of 2 Corinthians. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things become new. And all things are of God, who hath reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ, and hath given us the ministry of reconciliation. To wit, that God was in Christ, reconciling the world unto himself, not imputing their trespasses upon them, and hath committed unto us the word of reconciliation. Now then, we are ambassadors for Christ, as though God did beseech you by us. We pray you in Christ's stead, be ye reconciled to God. For he hath made him to be sin for us who knew no sin, that we may be made the righteousness of God in him. There's only one way to be reconciled to God, and that's through Jesus. One way. It's the only way. Being a Jew don't get you there. Being a good person don't get you there. Faith and the finished work of the cross, that's it. That's it. Let's get into our story for this week. 1 Samuel, chapter 10, King James Bible, the anointing of King Saul. Let's take a look. Verse 1. Then Samuel took a vial of oil and poured it upon his head and kissed him and said, Is it not because the Lord hath anointed thee to be captain over his inheritance? When thou art departed from me today, then thou shalt find two men by Rachel's sepulture, in the border of Benjamin at Zelzah. And they will say unto thee, The asses which thou wentest to seek are found, and lo, thy father has left the care of the asses, and sorroweth for you, saying, What shall I do for my son? Now if we remember from the previous study, the way that Saul ran into Samuel was because he was out looking for his father's asses, right? So that's why this is being brought up. And they go to the prophet to see if he knows, and he tells them, you know, they've been found. Don't worry about it. But the real purpose is that God has led Saul to Samuel for this anointing, right? Verse 3. Then shall thou go on forward from thence, and thou shalt come to the plain of Tabor. And there shall meet three men going up to God to Bethel, one carrying three kids, another carrying three loaves of bread, and another carrying a bottle of wine. And they will salute thee and give thee two loaves of bread, which thou shalt receive of their hands. After that, thou shalt come to kill, thou shalt come to the hill of God, where is the garrison of the Philistines, and it shall come to pass, when thou art come thither into the city, that thou shalt meet a company of prophets coming down from the high place with a psaltery and a tabret 
and a pipe and a harp before them, and they shall prophesy. And the Spirit of the Lord will come upon thee, and thou shalt prophesy with them, and shall be turned into another man. And let it be, when these signs are come unto thee, that thou do as an occasion serve thee, for God is with thee. And thou shalt go down before me in Gilgal, and behold, I will come down unto thee to offer burnt offerings and to sacrifice sacrifices of peace offerings. Seven days shalt thou tarry till I come to thee, and show thee what thou shalt do. And it was so, that when he had turned his back to go from Samuel, God gave him another heart. And all those signs came to pass that day. And when they came thither to the hill, behold, a company of prophets met him. And the Spirit of God came upon him, and he prophesied among them. And it came to pass, when all that knew him before time saw that, behold, he prophesied among the prophets. When the people said to one another, What is this that has come unto the son of Kish? Is Saul also among the prophets? And one of the same places answered and said, But who is their father? Therefore it became a proverb, Is Saul among the prophets? And when he had made an end of prophesying, he came to the high place, and Saul's uncle said unto him and to his servants, Whither went ye? And he said, To seek the asses. And when we saw that they were nowhere, we came to Samuel. And Saul's uncle said, Tell me, I pray thee, what Samuel said unto you? And Saul said unto his uncle, He told us plainly that the asses were found. But the matter of the kingdom, wherefore Samuel spoke, he told him not. Now look, that's not an incons insignificant thing. It's, again, pointing that Saul at this point in time has great character. His uncle's like, what did Samuel say to you? And did Saul go, he just told me I'm about to be king of this whole place. No. He, he told him about the donkeys, right? He said he told me what happened to the asses, but he didn't say a single thing about the kingdom. Because at this point in time, Samuel's in the will of God. And he's anointed with the Spirit, and he's got a new heart, and he's become a new man. And he's not being prideful or arrogant. He's being thoughtful. Verse 17. And Samuel called the people together unto the Lord to Mizpah. And he said unto the children of Israel, Thus saith the Lord God of Israel, I brought up Israel out of Egypt, and delivered you out of the hand of the Egyptians, and out of the hand of all kingdoms, and of them that oppressed you. And you have this day rejected your God, who himself saved you out of all your adversaries, and your tribulations. And ye have said unto him, Nay, but we set a king over us. Now therefore, present yourselves before the Lord by your tribes and by your thousands. So again, Samuel's pointing out that, hey, you rejected God. You rejected the theocracy. You rejected the one who saved you, who brought you out of Egypt, who saved you from all these tribulations, who did all these amazing things. And you have said, no, we do not want God. Instead, set a king over us. And so that's what you're going to get. So present yourselves before us. And when Samuel had caused all the tribes of Israel to come near, the tribe of Benjamin was taken. And when he had caused the tribe of Benjamin to come near by their families, the families of Matri were taken. And Saul, the son of Kish, was taken. And when they sought him, they, he could not be found. Therefore they inquired of the Lord further, If the man should yet come thither. And the Lord answered, Behold, he hath hid himself among the stuff. And they ran and fetched him thence. And when he stood among the people, he was higher than any of the people from the shoulders and upward. And Samuel said to all the people, See ye him whom the Lord hath chosen. There is none like him among all the people. And all the people shouted and said, God save the king. Then Samuel told the people of the manner of the kingdom. And he wrote it in a book and he laid it up before the Lord. And Samuel sent all the people away. And every man to his house. And Saul also went home to Gilbeth. 
to Gibeah, and there went with him a band of men whose hearts God had touched. But the children of Belial said, How shall this man save us? And they despised him and brought him no presents, but he held his peace. So here again, you have people rebelling against this decision. By the way, even though God is upset with the people of Israel for rejecting him and wanting a king, he still has anointed Saul, and Saul is his anointed. So it is sin and it is evil for these people of Belial, it says, so they're already evil, to murmur against this decision. But does Saul say, you know what? I'm king now. And do anything? No. It says that he held his peace. He just let it go. Chapter 11. Very, very short chapter here. Deals with the first victory of Saul. It's only 15 verses. Let's uh, read that and then we'll be done with our study for this morning. Verse 1. Then Nahash the Ammonite came up and encamped against Jabesh Gilead. And all the men of Jabesh said unto Nahash, Make a covenant with us, and we will serve thee. And Nahash the Ammonite answered them, On this condition will I make a covenant with you, that I may thrust out all your right eyes, and lay it for a reproach upon all Israel. And the elders of Jabesh said unto him, Give us seven days respite, and we may send a messenger unto all the coast of Israel, and then if there be no man to save us, we will come out to thee. Then came the messengers of Gibat of Saul, and told the tidings in the ears of the people, and all the people lifted up their voices and wept. And behold, Saul came after the herd out of the field, and Saul said, What aileth the people that they weep? And they told him the tidings of the men of Jabesh. And the Spirit of God came upon Saul, and when he heard those tidings, his anger was kindled greatly. So the Spirit of God has come upon Saul, so he's got this righteous anger. Scriptures say, be angry and sin not. There's n it's not sinful to be angry, especially if it's for righteousness' sake. And the Spirit of God came upon Saul, and when he heard those things, and his anger was kindled greatly, and he took a yoke of oxen, and hewed them in pieces, and sent them throughout the coast of Israel by the hands of Metchisers, saying, Whosoever cometh not forth after Saul and after Samuel, so shall it be done unto his oxen. And the fear of the Lord fell upon the people, and they came out with one consent. And when, the, when he numbered them in Bezek, the children of Israel were three hundred thousand, and the men of Judah thirty thousand. And they said unto the messengers that came, Thus shall ye say unto the men of Jabesh Gilead, Tomorrow by that time the sun be hot, ye shall have help. And the messengers came and showed it to the men of Jabesh, and they were glad. Therefore the men of Jabesh said, Tomorrow we will come out unto you. And ye shall do with us what seemeth good unto you. And so it was on the morrow that Saul put the people in three companies, and they came into the midst of the host in the morning watch and slew the Ammonites until the heat of the day. And it came to pass that they which remained were scattered, so that two of them were not left together. And the people said unto Samuel, Who is he that said, Shall Saul reign over us? Bring the men that we may put them to death. Remember, you had those people of Belial, right? Who murmured against Saul and said, Shall this man save us? And they despised him and brought him no presents. Remember? Now the people are saying, Bring them here. Let's, they need to be executed too. Well, what does Saul do? And Saul said, There shall not be a man put to death this day. For today the Lord hath wrought salvation in Israel. Then said Samuel to the people, Come and let us go to Gilgal and renew the kingdom there. And all the people went to Gilgal. And there they made Saul king before the Lord of Gilgal before the Lord in Gilgal. And there they sacrificed sacrifices of peace offerings before the Lord. And there Saul and all the men of Israel rejoiced greatly. And so that is the story of how King Saul began, filled with the Holy Spirit. 
given a new heart, becoming a new man, prophesying, defeating enemies in wisdom, with the praises of the people, being merciful, showing humility, and then over the next few weeks we're going to see that unravel, which is just very, very sad. And should be a lesson to all of us not to let our guard down. Lest the enemy sneak in and snatch our hearts. Lest the enemy sneak in and distract us from God. And blind us with trinkets and empty promises and temptations. I'm going to fast today, do some fasting and just praying and seeking the face of God. It's a spiritual discipline that we should all should practice. I'm not going to tell you how to go about it. Uh, we all have our ways and uh, what, what works, uh, what we can make happen. And uh, so I'll be fasting a majority of today just seeking the face of God, looking for direction, looking for His Spirit to be upon me. And uh, so if you want to join me in that today, you certainly can. Please consider praying for the podcast and the future of the work that I'm doing here, that I would just get revelation from God, that I would just get clarity from God on how to move forward. And it may be, and I'm starting to lean towards that God just wants me to continue as is, to stay the path for now, continue to do the Bible studies. Be praying that uh, there'll be no hindrance to continue to upload these. It's no secret that a lot of people are being taken down who dare speak truth. So be praying for the protection of this podcast. That the word of God may continue to go forth across the earth. And also if you would like to support the work that's being done here. If you think that it's valuable and of value... If you appreciate what's being done here and you're able, please consider supporting the work by going to scriptureandprophecy.com. And then at the very top there is the support tab. That's all I have for you this morning. Lord willing. Remember, we're always to say, Lord willing. Don't say I'm going to do this and that tomorrow because tomorrow is promised to no man, right? But we say, Lord willing. So, Lord willing. On Friday, I'll be back with you for our prophet's portion for the week, the Half Torah. Peace and grace be with all of you. And until next time, God bless.